Through the lights, cameras in action, glamour, glitter, and gold. I unfold a scroll, plant seeds, and stampede the globe. And I'm deceased, begin the beast to rise like yeast to conquer peace. Leaving savages to roam in the streets. The savages is roaming the streets. Hey, man. Shout out to Nasir, man. Hey. Hey, GHH, man. I'm Rob J10X. I'm Equality. And we got some uh the extended family in the building. You know, yeah. uh, scholar Fred Davis Stunts and as always, uh our super producer, Sav in the building. Yeah. Uh podcast and platformation. On January 6th, uh, we saw a historic event, you know, that I, I consider personally probably the greatest display of white supremacy of my lifestyle of my lifetime i don't even like calling it white supremacy i just say white privilege, privilege. Yeah. um and almost to a man black people all pretty much had the same question and which was what would happen if black people did that <laughs> and uh brother eq i got a new nickname for eq man <laughs> I, 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 solutions <laughs> you know because uh you know what i'm saying you did the research and the homework and uh brought it to the cipher that you know not quite apples to apples but we do have a historic documented example of black people yeah uh going to a capital and yeah. you know storming the state capital uh, yeah. it wasn't the the um capital in washington dc but um what you're referring to is the 1967 man when the black panthers stormed the, the um the state capital of california which is located in sacramento mm. uh, in protest of um at that time, what they called the Mulford Act. And this is Ronald Reagan was the governor. He was the governor okay. at the time. And, you know, with the history of the Panthers, you know, the Panthers started out in 1966 and, and they became popular in Oakland for their police patrols. Hmm. Somebody got pulled over by the police and the, the Panthers were standing there, the shotguns. Remember, Huey, he knew the penal codes in California. According to penal code, X, 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 yeah, Y, Z, exactly. I can stand 10, 8 to 10 feet away and da, 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 da. So he's standing there and, and the laws were pretty liberal. It, yeah. was, uh, it was open carry in California. As long as you had a license, it wasn't concealed, and you were not pointing your gun in a threatening uh, fashion. Most definitely. So, I, oh, oh, go ahead. No, I was saying, I'll say one thing that was different about the, uh, the, when black people did it versus what we saw on January 6th is they didn't break any laws they're just, they no, were, they, they, because I, I, but, but I, what I was saying just just to give some context with the police patrols was that that was the law yeah so the Mulford Act was named after Don Mulford he was what during that time they called him an assembly man okay. in, in the politics of uh of California so he entered he introduced the bill the, the Mulford Act hmm. and when they knew that they were going to debate that at the Capitol, that's when about 30 of the Panthers, they say storm, but they walked, they were, you know, they were doing it legit. They walked yeah. up um, on the steps of the Capitol, actually walked in the Capitol and they had shotguns yeah. with them. They, Dave Chappelle touched on this, on that, the, um, it was it 846? Yeah, the 846. Uh, they didn't have, he was saying they had semi-automatic weapons. They didn't have that. They had shotguns. Okay. But they went in they marched in um they had their guns and what happened it was it wasn't a situation like how it is now on the january 6th yeah with what with what happened at the uh at the capitol in the dc but it was a moment in history where black people armed black people lawfully armed black people hmm. did go to a capitol building and then they actually went inside of the capitol building armed now of course later that um that Mulford act was passed and then California ended up having some of the strictest gun laws. Wow. There was no more, no more open carry, any of that. So it, it changed the laws. That's right. It's crazy to me. The difference, I'm, I'm just starting at like the difference in preparation and, and execution. Like mm -hmm. basically, if you were a Trump supporter, you basically didn't have to do anything but just show up to D.C. You know, you show up to D.C., you got a rallying cry from the, uh, from the president and you know, and one of the things that I thought about is, you know, um, good thing they weren't trained. You know, like, good yeah. thing they, di they didn't have an organized plan, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because then we might be dealing with a, a, a totally different scenario. But that law, and it eventually, it banned people from having uh, any armed weapons at any capital. Mm. So, so now they didn't show up armed. <laughs> yeah. Dang. You know, as a result of what happened with the Panthers in 67. One thing you had pointed out too, uh, just we were talking offline and you had sent an article about like the NRA 
And, you know, for all of my lifetime, I've always known the NRA to be an organization that basically is anti-gun control, basically doesn't want you to tell them anything about you know mm-hmm. how to how they should their relationship with guns you know nra feel like if i want to have 27 assault rifles in my spot i'm welcome to do that it was real eye-opening to me to realize that hey there was a point in time when the nra actually supported gun control and that was when yeah negroes had guns yeah you know it's, yeah, a, it's amazing yeah. how like how much the tone changes the same with the republicans remember republicans are are supposedly very pro to a very pro second amendment yeah. don mulford the guy that introduced that act, mm-hmm. he's a Republican. And that's, you know, it's just, that's a real, I mean, I think that's something that shouldn't get, get past us too, like in, in black America, is that is the fact that, uh, you know, there's, when we look at like the whole two sets of laws, I mean, this thing like really, it's something that's still in place to this day, you know, is that we can see that like, okay, there's the law, and then there's the law when, you know, we are, you know, attributed with acting on it versus when, when they're, acting on it and when i saw to me the hardest thing for me to understand is that like how did they not know like when they said we need to call in support for what's going on at the capitol and i'm just like what the hell was somebody already doing that was more important for them already being at the capitol like what were they doing like don i need you to go work traffic (laughs) like where 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 was somebody at that wasn't if, if you run if you run you know, uh, whether it's like the National Guard, the local police, whatever. Yeah. What did you wake up this morning assigning people who weren't at the Capitol to be doing? Yeah, because like to, for them to, to not um, be there to protest, you do. I've I've been in protest. Yeah. And you had to get a permit. So yeah. it's not a, a random wake up one morning and say you're gonna protest. Yeah. That they are. That's why they people that protest they know. Okay, it's a certain amount of feet you have to be away. It's it. Yeah. You have to get a permit, just like anything else. You get a permit to protest. And the fact that it was like... Um, so it wasn't unexpected, is what I'm saying. That's the part that I feel like... like Of all the things where I feel like my uh, intelligence is being insulted, the lack of preparation is probably the most disrespectful out of everything because it's, it's not like... This was like the equivalent... For this to happen on January 6th, this was the equivalent of an of a after-school brawl. Hey, me and you... After school is on a pot. There was no guesswork about it. It was January 6th. Yeah. It's the day that, you know, the whole um, proceedings has to be done to, you know, certify with whether it's electoral college or mm-hmm. you know, uh, Biden as president. Like, people knew that this date was coming. So, like, for them to be that unbothered by a potential uprising mm-hmm. of white people and then the, the parallel that, we, that we're able to see with the Black Lives Matter protests in the same area, to me, it was, it was uh, I mean, like, life is, I mean, just is the greatest screenwriter because, like, we were able to see, literally, they didn't even have the same equipment that they had for Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter, really, they were out there with the whole, they were out there with the commando suit. You know, they got that special fit they only put yeah. on when they, when they about, it's about to yeah. be some action, you know. Yeah. They didn't even have a commando fit for the uh, for them. Yeah, you it's, know? It's, it's very reactionary. Because yeah, they, now, all of, now, as a result of that, now you get the reaction. And mm-hmm. now they're camping out. I mean, they, they've been camping out at, uh, at the Capitol because on the 20th, on Wednesday, the inauguration will take place. And I want to say this may be the first time in history that I don't think anyone's going to be at that inauguration. I don't. I mean, it's it's yeah. barricaded for the most part. They. I mean, it's they damn near have more troops out there than they had in Afghanistan. I mean, they. You know, just, it's a it's a real it's a real you know just a, a strange time that we're living in because so many things are being done differently. Like I don't know historically that there's ever been a president not at the pre you know. Pre, is it predecessor the person comes after yeah. you? Yeah, the predecessor the inauguration. So it's like, a, but I realized it's a lot of history being made, man. And most these, definitely, it's, it's these roaring twenties. And then another thing I, I want to just throw out there, when, you know, when they use the word terrorist, right? Mm, yeah. Well, they said it was an insurrection, and then they they finally started using the word terrorist, which mm-hmm. to me, just from a historical standpoint, and saying terrorists and some of the news people, the commentators, oh, we've never seen anything like this or terrorism. And for us, we say, okay, we knew Tulsa, Oklahoma, they dropped a bomb. 
Tulsa, mm-hmm. Oklahoma, 1921. That's terrorism on your own land. Dropping bombs. That's the whole Gap Band song. You dropped yeah. a bomb on me. The um, Gap Band, Greenwood, Archer, and Pine. Hmm. Um, being from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Then, something that doesn't really get talked about a lot is in Philadelphia, the MOVE organization. Mm-hmm. Around 1985, John African and the MOVE organization, this is the Philadelphia police drop a bomb. Yeah. In, Phil- oh. in Philadelphia. Wow. Taking away it, it, innocent, like people that were not even involved in it. About 65 houses were burned. You know why? Because they were saying, oh, they may act on the, uh, on the firefighters. So just hmm. let it burn. Hmm. Just, just, just let this territory burn. So we have examples of terrorism, not just breaching the Capitol building. If we're going to talk about it, we got to talk about it. Keep talking about it. Even if we're talking about the Klan, it's been terrorism on American soil done by Americans. Let me yeah. ask you this. Knowing, especially as we've come into more and more knowledge, you know, really on this, this journey of this podcast, do you think that what's happening now is it's just we've reached a breaking point of just so many things have happened that now it's undeniable? Or do you think that this is the first time as vigilantes we've, we've been able to document and share and disperse information as quickly about what's going on? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. But remember, um, this is people acting out against government. See, we've been used to looking at it from the lens of um, black and white. Mm-hmm. Literally. Yeah, no. Nah, black and white. Good point. So now we're seeing an act of damn near an overthrow of the government. Hmm. They're going to the, the I mean, DC is Chocolate City, right? I mean, if, yeah. it, was, if it was just about black people, it was, they could have been mobbing out in the street. Yeah. No, they went to the Capitol building. They were, um, I forgot how they described it or how, even how uh, Trump was describing it in his speech. Because, of course, he's saying um, the election was a fraud. Yeah. That's, that's what he's been using as the propaganda. So I don't know if, if they're saying they were going to fight for democracy or, you know, I, I don't know how, how, it's being, um, how it's being told or what their actions are. And they, they say, well, we, we, we are... Um, acting as patriots. So I, I kind of, I'm saying that to say, I got to be careful with, I understand the, 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 the side of, yeah, they're going in there and they're, they, they're bringing in Confederate flags in the Capitol. Yeah. But it seems like it's a, it's a war of the, the politics. Race is always, it's in it, but I'm just paying attention to watching the chessboard in the pieces one thing i think I, I really learned from from this and even going back to you know a lot of the trump speeches that i go back and review like what exactly was said you know i didn't really have enough respect to the code that is spoken yeah. in what's said what's not said and what's alluded to something like you know we're gonna have to be strong to take back the country that's a rallying cry you know, for, you know, that segment of, of, uh, Americans. And, you know, a lot of times the way we communicate, you know, I mean, just in particular, like this in African-American vernacular, we very straight to the point, you know, like even down to the, Hey, we need to do this at that time. That's, yeah. that's how we communicate. What I realize is, and I really have always been kind of, um, anti symbolic victory, but I realize now that they, a lot of that segment of white America, they communicate in symbolic language. So their language, it, when they're saying something like, we've got to take back, it's going to be a strong fight. It's like that. He's describing a war. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't really never took it as that. Yeah, that, there's, a, there's a coded language. Just like, um, you know, as with anything, we have a coded language. Um, when... I talk to you, it may be a sense of a coded language. Yeah. Okay, if someone says, you know, fuck 12, somebody say, what you mean by that? Yeah. That's a coded language. Or 5 0. Right? Yeah. Hey, 5 0 coming around the corner. Now, if you don't know that language, you're like, what, what you mean 5 0 coming around the corner? We know that as 
police coming, 5-0 coming up. around the corner. It's always been a coded language. Now, what they may try to stand on is the First Amendment. But I don't want to get into the legalities of it because that's not my area. Yeah, I've never seen the thing about the coded language. I've never seen somebody black call for our action in a coded language. You, our, our call to action is very straightforward. Million Man March, this day, this time. Uh, there was never, I don't know that like there's something that Farrakhan can say that like us as a people, you know, obviously I'm sure that people in, you know, his, his closest community would understand, but I don't know if there's a stand back, stay alert call that like me hearing, you know, to, to my ear knows that it's time to, you know, get in formation, so to speak, the way that I realized that like Trump, you know, at least his, his most loyal followers kind of live by. And um, the power that he hold, you know, one thing I could say I felt really relieved and 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 you know uh, happy about was the fact that I don't believe in no allegiance to any political party. I, I'm I'm from the you know Dr. Claude school of thought, where it's like, hey, I'm who who has the best interest in mind for us, and like, had it not been for some of the racial climate and everything like that, I felt like I was looking at really a, a you know. It was a tough boxing match to score but until the racism stuff came into place. And I'm glad I really kind of just parked that for now and realized, hey, this election, I'm going to just go ahead and go with what, you know what I'm saying, black people seem to in, in majority want, you know, because even though I do vote probably more symbolically than anything else, I felt really relieved that I didn't have a, a, a voter ballot that had a vote for Trump on it, you know, because I was like, man, I thought that I thought that this was a guy who was uh, maybe rogue, playing by his own rules. And some of those things, to be honest, some of those things, I felt like he, in some ways I knew I was getting a more clear message from him than Biden at first. And I was really like kind of feeling like, OK, well, at least we're getting at least we're getting something that I know what it is. But I'm glad I didn't, you know. I'm glad I just said, hey, and just decided to do what I did because I, I probably would feel a lot of guilt had I, you know, tried to go into this too open-minded and, and, and you know, supported that, that foolishness. So another thing that's, that's, that's historic about what's going on in these early um, stages of 2021 is for the first time in history, we have a president that's been impeached twice. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if you could explain too, like you were explaining some of the things that the second impeachment means. Uh, as yes, far as it's a, um, for one, he wouldn't be able to run again. It's the possibility that he would never be able to run again. And he would lose a lot of the perks that are normally associated um, with a president after their term is, is, is over. Meaning mm -hmm. like, it's like the pension, the, the um, secret service for life. Um, a lot of the things that, that come with it he would he would lose those perks and one of the things um also just from the historical standpoint is um when people say well he you're impeaching him and he's down there out of office you know that was that was um, my feeling for life. yeah that and, and so losing those perks and that wouldn't be the first time that that happened historically it was uh, a guy that was um Name uh, William uh, Belknap. <laughs> you know, this that's, is just... that's clutch. You coming through <laughs> with that Belknap. Yeah, you know, like, hey, I yeah. couldn't help you. <laughs> like, yeah, he was under, uh, he was a Civil War vet, fought on the side of the Union under the presidency of uh, Ulysses uh, Grant. Mm -hmm. Grant, he was, um, and he was the, the, the U.S., um, what did they call him? The U.S., uh, was it secretary? Was it one of the secretarial positions? Yeah, yeah. Or maybe defense. They didn't call it defense. They didn't call it defense. Um, I got it. I got it written down just so in, in case I forgot. He was the uh, secretary of war. That's okay. what they call it. He was the secretary secretary of war. This goes back to the eighteen hundreds, right? Eighteen seventy six. But anyway, um, he resigned. So he was thinking, well, if I resign, I won't get impeached. Yeah. But later that day, he still got impeached. Hey, got fired on the day off. <laughs> Grant <laughs> accepted his res resignation. Yeah. And he still got impeached. But yeah. here's the, 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 the tie-in is that um, 
So the House agreed to impeach him, but the Senate, you you know you got to get two-thirds of, yeah. uh, of the Senate to convict him. So he wasn't convicted. And that's the thing with Trump. He has this second impeachment, but he needs that two-thirds of the, uh, of the Senate for it to be a conviction. So mm -hmm. he's going to get 50 on the side of the, um, yeah, the Democrats. Yeah, more than 10 Republicans. But he needs at least yeah. 17 on the Republican side. So that's where it's going to be one of those things where, you know, they're going to have to be in a hot seat to make that decision. When we draw these lines, we talk about Democrats and Republicans and, and these lines, man, you know. But even that second impeachment, um, I want to say, was the first time in history uh, that bipartisan. On, on that vote, right. take, take away his rights. But the one thing I don't want—I don't want taken away from Trump. Don't take away his uh, secret Secret Service uh, detail because somebody get Trump. Trump spilling all the tea. You, <laughs> you get Trump. Trump telling everything. Trump gonna tell him where. Trump giving all the codes away. So like, keep the man protected because uh, you know it's national security is at, at you know at, at stake. You know with that, but it is a um, it's an interesting time that we living in, man. I, I really. I remember the day when Trump was elected, and it was funny. I was at my boy Terrell house. I'll never forget this. And we were watching it. You ever watch a game that your team's supposed to win, and mm -hmm. they start off kind of slow? And you're like, man, damn, man, the Texas tripping today. But mm -hmm. it's the first quarter, yeah. and they down 14. Then the second quarter come, they down 28. Mm -hmm. Then the third quarter come, they down 35. Mm -hmm. By the fourth quarter, you just like, man, like this is, this is real. And I, we were just kind of thinking like, what does that mean like what in this wound up being something that like just from a his, historical standpoint you know i really i'm curious to like how i mean if you take trump out of it like right now in american history who is considered the worst president ever you know i would say maybe nixon but i mean nixon actually was in you know impeached and left during the term but andrew jackson he was impeached. He was tough. Uh, but in school, were you in school? Has is there any president that was taught that we were that we're taught? No, about? I mean, we were never really taught that presidents were bad. Exactly, that was my point. And in know. history, the one thing um, about people like Trump, they are very concerned about their legacy. Yeah. So the the other time with the uh, the William uh, Belknap guy is that his legacy was always remembered as him being impeached. It was never him being a war hero in a civil war. Yeah. He was decorated until that time. Yeah. So legacy-wise, it's been tainted. And guys like Trump, even the president, because some people will say Bush. You know, um, the, the both Bushes may have been. Man, you know, Bush. Hey, Bush had a cold rebrand. Bush uh, on the ranch painting pictures now. You know, Bush rebranded himself as a liberal almost. Well, you know, Trump right. was able to change the conversation. So you almost forgot about how bad some of the other ones were because you had someone that, that comes in. It's it's like, um, you know, listening to, to music and you think someone is vulgar and then someone else comes mm -hmm. and you're like, whoa, well, I, I thought know, that man. was vulgar. Bro. You know, at a certain point during certain doing certain dances was considered vulgar in the 50s or the 60s. Hey, man, Donald Trump made George W. Bush look like Mahatma Gandhi, man. <laughs> like, like he, he took it to a whole nother level, you know, um, which I'm like, you know, part of me is like, okay, is this a lesson that we learn as a nation or is this the beginning of a new type of political candidate, you know, who like, Going back, we always say, you know, remember growing up, we always talk about how we thought Tupac had a lot of tattoos. Yeah. We, I look at Pac now. I'm like, Pac, Pac looked like he had a nine to five. Pac yeah, didn't really have a lot of, like, yeah, was, you know, but like, minimal. so it's like, you know, is this, was, is this an outlier that we learned from this mistake? Or is this like the new beginning of just, uh, you know, role? And then also, is Trump just going to be limited to a guy on the right? Or, I mean, is there going to be a left a left side Trump that comes who, you know, is just as, you know, relentless and ruthless, but he's rel relentless and ruthless from the liberal side. And, you know, that could, if we do have one of those, I mean, you know, we might be looking at the makings of like the, the seedlings of, of, you know, another civil war in 40 years, you know yeah, what I'm saying? It just Something depends on nature, when, you know, know the, the, the next... The next Rob J, the next EQ that's sitting here doing a gentleman's history hour, they'll be talking about 2021. 
Man. And then, you know, they'll be talking about 2021 like we talk about, you know, like we just talked about 1967 or 1876. So they'll be having that conversation and they'll be answering those questions. Man. Hey, if the Lord say the same, I, I would love to live to to watch in 2071. You know what I'm saying? The the gentleman's history of of that time, I guess YouTube probably being virtual reality. <laughs> but I would love to see then some with the kids January 6, 2071, or kids or young adults. By then everybody be kids to us. You know? <laughs> yeah. But uh I, I would love to hear like what they have to say about it, man, because you know, history and the thing about the information we live in now is, um, you know, I always felt like this, man, my allegiance is to the truth. You know, like, I don't, if, look, if, hey, I ain't got nothing but love for you, ain't been nothing but a friend of me, man. If you wrong, I'm going to be like, hey, man, he was wrong. But we got this new allegiance where it's like on, on both sides. We're more allegiance to the people who believe what we believe than what actually happened. So, you know, a lot of times it's like whoever has the most resources has the loudest voice. So it's like that this story can very well be told of a story of depending on who, you know, what, what the direction we go in as a nation, this could easily be re rocked as, you know, a story, a story of, you know, a, a bold patriotic act, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, just depending on who's telling it, you know. Yeah, to your point, though, Rob, my bad. I didn't mean to cut No, you, no, but, go ahead. But, yeah, man, I always say, man, people's um, allegiance supersedes their principles. Hey, that was yeah. a bar right there. Man, that's, you know, the yeah. world that we live in. You know what yeah. I mean? You see it time and time and again. Yeah. So. And with the um, with the advent of, of social media, everyone has an audience. And Trump was able to magnify that. Like, he used social media to his advantage. He knew, hey, we, we live in a world where everyone has an audience. I can go outside and, and, and jump rope for five minutes and cut my phone on. I have an audience. You know, everyone has an audience. It wasn't always like that. So when everyone has an audience, you know, people can say whatever they want to say. I mean, hell, it's, it's people on Clubhouse right now saving the world with a conversation. <laughs> hey, shout out to the they club. Somebody saving the world on Twitter right now. Let me ask you this. <laughs> How do you feel about the muting of Donald Trump via Twitter. Um, I know that's a that's a tough one to me because well I would say this. He has a responsibility because of his position. It's like getting a job, right? Um, if you're a stripper and your job is strip, then hey, you on social media showing your naked behind and you doing that, hey, that that's associated with your job, certain responsibility. But if you are, uh, if you have a different job and a different position, then you just have to move different. Now, does it violate um, his certain liberties, uh, constitutional, um, constitution-wise? I'm not sure. I'm not a lawyer, um, but I just say that you do have a responsibility. I mean, even with with me, I mean, um, you got to conduct yourself like you have something to lose. Yeah, I feel that, but I, as, yeah. as a president, I just feel like it, it's, it, it is some responsibility that comes with it, in my opinion. I, I agree with that, but I, I will, you know, um, just channeling like this, even though the wisdom of, of the, the, the late, great, divine Nipsey Hussle, when he was describing a lot of times jail politics and how sometimes like, you can be a crip in a, uh, in a blood pod and they're not just going to all just jump on you because they know that they got homies that's bloods in a crip pod. And it's like, I think about Twitter, I think about a lot of these things like, okay, these media companies and everything, they're in alignment with the left side. So a lot of things, a lot of these stances that they take, you know, it's kind of, it doesn't necessarily offend a lot of us as a people because generally speaking, you know, even if we're not necessarily Democrat, whatever, most of the time the left side agenda doesn't really harm black America. But what if the next Twitter is owned by somebody, you know, who repped that red? Now, Black Lives Matter rally, Kyle, uh, I don't, Kyle Rudin, whatever his last name is, uh, you know, shoot somebody, okay, bam, can't say Black Lives Matter no more. 
that would be a problem. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not comparing, like, uh, I guess I am comparing a rogue social, uh, you know, social active event that happened at a social uh, activism event to a president speaking. But I'm, I'm always very cautious about when they get caught up or no, a rule gets applied to them because if they if they uh if they spank them then they pulling out the paddle for us you know what i'm saying so i'm kind of like just looking at that like okay does donald trump need to be muted I, i'm not I, i'm not opposing that at all i'm just concerned of okay if he can be muted if farrakhan says something you know that farrakhan was muted they took away his um I think it's Facebook, Instagram, yeah, Instagram, Completely. yeah. It's okay, so again. so okay, so Instagram. perfect example. So now yeah. now we take a fair con. Radio, yeah, yeah. exactly. And TV. Yeah. Okay, so like so okay, so we go with fair con, right? But let's say if it, let's say if if us take it down a little a notch, and it's not, you know, something that maybe is uh, as you know, quote unquote, divisive as maybe a fair con, but it's somebody who has a message that's maybe a little. Let, but it just it just rubs somebody the wrong way. Yeah, but can Wesley Muhammad be be banned? Well, because Wesley said, Muhammad's not the president of the United States. It's like um, if you go to get a job, sometimes they may that that background check may be to check your social media accounts. You just mm -hmm. have to be accountable, and it's a responsibility as the president of the United States. You can't move the way other people may be able to move because you have a job, and that job is. You are the leader of the free world. It's a responsibility that comes with it. Well, look, we got to be full throated about this, man. They should have, they should have uh, been taking away his Twitter privileges mm -hmm. because now the damage is done. This yeah. is theater of the absurd. Yeah, all of this is political theater. He should have been taken off of that. The the, the damage is done right yeah, now. Yeah, and that stock that stock started to go down exactly. after too. That a hey, Jack Dorsey, he looked at that that stock portfolio and. Uh, Hey, it wasn't hidden like it was hidden exactly. prior. Exactly. Hey, you know, I'm like I said, I can't impose them the move that was made. I, I just always kind of look at, like I said, if it was done to them, I'm just kind of looking at. Okay, I always feel like it's coming back. You know, same thing with the Donald Sterling thing. Okay, you recorded this man at his house, secretly recorded. It. What happens when I ha when when that's one of us? Now, obviously, we're not president. You know. And, and things that, of that nature. Um, and I'm not like so much of a free speech advocate that I feel like you should be up, be able to get up there and say anything. Um, I just, I do know that right now, a lot of the media companies are ran by people whose maybe views are in alignment with, you know, our interests. And I'm just kind of curious to like what happens if, you know, some of these companies, hey, if Twitter was owned by just a, a you know, straight, red flag confederate you know now are we opening up the door or a standard where it's like hey what if instead of it being calling for rallies it's a person saying that hey you know you um you know you have the right to not be vaccinated that that's something that so you're saying it it, it sets a precedence yeah i'm saying that it sets a pre my my concern for all precedents is is how is it going to be applied to black people because i'm yet to see a precedent where the black people didn't receive the harshest application of that that precedence, you know, I might be, you know, being a little paranoid or you know foreshadowing a little too far, and and, and you know to be fair, that probably that's comparing apples to something that's not an apple because we've only had one president tweet like this. I'm trying to understand. You're saying you don't remember a time where black people set the precedent? No, I'm saying that when a precedent is set. Normally, the harshest application of that precedent is going to be against black people. So I'm saying like, okay, we're going to start monitoring. We're going to start saying, hey, if what you say on Twitter it, uh, incites a certain, you know, act, you can now be banned. Then I'm looking at, okay, what happens when someone has, you know, a, a Black Lives Matter rally and somebody is, gets punched out there. Someone gets, there, someone gets shot there. Now, can you not say Black Lives Matter on Twitter? You know, like, so I'm just kind of like, what, what doors does it open up as far as policing other people's speech? Because now the president being set being that, hey, you know, we had to stop him because it was risking, 
you know, now obviously I don't think a Black Lives Matter thing risks national security, but you know, that was just kind of just one of the things. And maybe I'm just taking a little, ex- taking an extremist view of it. Well, I but, think you're right, Rob. I mean, uh, you're right in exact. Basically, when America catch a cold, we catch the flu. We, they come down harder on us for different things. So it's going to be interesting to see how this pans out. But I mean, it's already been president said that they handle us harsher, period. You know what I'm saying? And to EQ's point, he is the president of the United States. With this, they should have did it a long time ago. All of this hinges off of race, though. Uh, it's a brother, also a white guy by the name of Tim Snyder on Democracy Now! yesterday came out with an article called The American Abyss. He points out that everything, this whole situation was about race because when he's talking about electoral fraud, he's not even counting black people because he's talking about the places where we voted, he, he lost, Philadelphia. So he's, he's saying don't count those places. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So everything still hinges off of race, even if it's looking nebulous in this whole storm in the Capitol thing. It still hinges off of race and white supremacy trying to install itself and saying, hey, we're still here. This is still how it has to go down. Yeah, I, th- I think it, um, from listening to you talk, Fred, it, uh, it reminds me of the, when a person feels like they losing their country. Yes. Yeah. And you look at what's going on and you look at the population and you look at how the world, if, if, if I'm at home, if I'm one of those so-called patriots and I'm looking at TV and I'm saying, in my mind, and then my guy loses and, and it's propagated as this some fraud, I'm starting to feel like I'm losing my country. Yes. Yeah. When I'm, lo- I'm losing my country, I need to act out. Yes. And we got to break down that term uh, patriotism because that's not what they're talking about. They're saying patriotism, but patriotism is an instinct of affinity. Yeah. I don't have any affinity to white supremacy. My affinity is to you brothers because we all come from the same socioeconomic background. So patriotism in their use, they're using it differently. They really mm-hmm. see white supremacy, a white land, white nationalism. Yeah. Yeah. That get yeah. back to that coded language thing. Yeah, like, the know, messaging like, yeah, is very of, important in this. Yeah. That's why when Biden said these thugs, miscreant terrorists, that was a good moment. I mean, I don't like Biden, but that was important for him to be full-throated on what it is. Mm-hmm. What we're seeing is white terrorism. And it's not a coup because they wasn't organized, but it was contrived because now we found out yesterday that they in they uh they stripped the panic button. That a lot yeah, of those people ladies, saw that. Yeah, they, yeah, they stripped office. the panic button. The yeah. National Guards wasn't there because Trump controls the National Guard. All of this was contrived. Yeah, the sister it, Ayana. Yeah. Yeah. All of this coming out now on how every you know, they had Olympians there. They had a uh, military vet. There was a it was a police officer. Yeah, from, it was police um, officer. HPD. I think he may yeah, he yeah. he's gonna get a- Asian police officer. Yeah, and yes. he's um I want to say he may get convicted. Mm. Mm-hmm. Was a, uh, and this is clearly a uh, off duty cop. Was that wow from I Houston? Was, I was saying it definitely said uh, he will be brought up on charges. Yeah, he's sure yeah. That that's gonna happen. But I'm saying yeah, Federal. brought up on charges. Let me ask y'all something, brothers. Um, with all of this going on, where do uh, where do black people stand? That's do we do we question. do we stand oh, on the outside and watch the fight? Do we, do we, this or, position, or we, I, or what I, do we, I, I'm we watching, about, I'm like, yeah, are we spectators? We do. I'm this is what we should like do, but love. we should be getting ready as well, too, because what comes out of the rubble. Now, in this fight, we should let these white supremacists fight amongst themselves because this is white, two different white factions. It's back to the book of T.W.E.B. Du Bois. How are we going to handle the Negroes with, like, it was a book called The Mask of Chivalry. And in the book of Mask of Chivalry, it's, 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 it's in Athens, Georgia, and it's the upper crust whites battling with the lower caste whites, saying how we're going to handle the niggas. Through the court system, they were like, nah, the upper crust wanted the court system. Mm-hmm. The lower level wanted to hang us. They wanted the Ku Klux Klan. So this is a battle of that. We should be getting ready for what comes out of the rubble, but we should let them fight. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I'm, hey, so y'all don't think this is moving in the right fight. direction? You don't think this shows... Uh, change? Yeah, because corruption collapses of its own weight. Capitalism, this is racist capitalism. It was all good when he was getting tax breaks, tax deductions. You know, everybody balled hard off of Trump's uh, 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 candidacy, presidency. Nancy Pelosi, you know, everybody that uh, upper crust, everybody that's in Congress is basically rich. You get what I'm saying? So with certain things they fought against and certain things they didn't, put, didn't push too hard. But now it's collapsing of its own weight. And now they they're feeling it, and their own people are getting shot, 
And all of a sudden, the blue light, where did Blue Lives Matter go? You know, it was never about that. Hey, man, every great civilization must fall, man. And it's the U.S.'s exactly. turn. Build and destroy. That time. Yeah. That's how it goes. They say build yeah. and destroy. And, We're and, uh, looking at the beginnings of it. You, you know, know, when you, when you, when you like made the, the statement about um, when it happens on the flip side, yeah. it's like the war on drugs. When it happens to my daughter, it's a problem. Nah, it's a problem. When it happens to my side of America, it's a problem. You're a crackhead, but you know, then it's an a, opioid crisis when it happens. But to I life. think it's too. And then when you believe in something, you know, the thing is, when you want to believe something, delusion comes into play. Like I th look, I'm a. That's I love the Rockets. I love the Rockets with all my heart. I genuinely believe that Kyrie Irving was out here acting like the Odd Father, so that he wouldn't get traded. In this James Hart. I believe it was a conspiracy. Now I have no evidence of that, right? But my allegiance to the Rockets got me so feeling so strong that I've come up in my in my mind that Kyrie Irving been acting crazy, doing all this, so he wouldn't get traded for this. Now, this is something that really doesn't have that much of an impact on day-to-day -day life. We're talking about the Rockets. But switch out the Rockets with a president. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's like, and that's really a lot of what's going on. And it's like when once you have that emotional attachment. It doesn't take much. See, one thing that I learned about Americans that I, I didn't really realize before is we have a, like, it's distinctly American to want to be right more so than want the truth. Yeah. So it's like, we want to be right so bad that it doesn't rip the truth. Really, is kind of like, eh, whatever. No, you know, no. like, um, and I think that's what we're dealing with right now. So it's like, you know, on the, on the, on the fight thing, Hey, man, I specialize in black. I specialize in blackness. You know, that's that's my expertise. Bro. You know, like anything. I, I like I, what you said about the psychology, though, because the, one thing about psychology, the mind will corrupt itself to satisfy the body's desires. Mm. You get what I'm saying? It will corrupt itself to satisfy the body's desires. Yeah. If you're getting this feeling off of being privileged, because it is a type of euphoric feeling, mm -hmm. knowing that you're better than somebody, mm -hmm. then the mind will corrupt itself and create these arguments on why you should maintain your position. You get what I'm saying? Or mm -hmm. uh, it's their culture, or they, they, they don't do this, or they just don't study hard enough. I mean, all type of little uh, uh, excuses for, to keep your same psychology, or yeah, your man. same, you know, your mind. It's history, it's the Iceman inheritance, man. Exactly. Yeah. And the cra crazy thing to me is that like, treating people like equal is losing. Like they're losing yeah, something. Like exactly. that's a real kind of crazy paradigm. It's almost like, damn, okay, like for you, like if I make a hundred thousand dollars and you make fifty thousand dollars, for you making a hundred thousand dollars to feel like I'm now losing, that's a problem. That's a problem. Like so, basically, because you're not saying like you're the loss is not an actual tangible loss. You didn't actually lose anything. Like there, there's not a that I know of, I'm not some constitutional scholar, but I can't think of a single thing that has actually been lost. Yeah. But to, so nothing has been lost, you know, but um, for a person to feel like instead of me beating you by 30, me winning by like 10 is a loss, that's a problem. That's like a real, that's a real, real messed up mentality where it's like, but that's why it's like this whole I, one thing I appreciate about this this uh, time is we getting the truth out. Yeah. You know, it's almost like, man, you know, you got to, you know, a lot of times, sometimes these crews we're are some of the truth. We getting. Well, I'm saying emotionally, we, we getting the truth about how they, they feel are. about yeah, it. I don't think are. that's yeah. I don't think that's some truth. I think that that's how they Was that ever this. a mystery, though? Yeah. No, the, no, no, no. Uh, never we vocalized. Knew, we knew, but it's a lot of brothers yeah. and sisters out there that was under this veil. We were friends before. They needed this. We needed to show yeah. who, you know, uh, let, let the cat out of the bag. Y yeah, because I feel like before before this, we were frenemies. You know, we were kind of like, yeah, we act like it's patriot us, we, the flag, patriot. It's crazy. Like, it, it's amazing to me, like, how five years ago, kneeling exactly. was, you know, offensive exactly. to the flag. But, like, running up in the Capitol isn't. You know, yeah. we haven't heard any, we, it hadn't been no talk about yeah. the flag. Without that patri, uh, uh, patriotism. Yeah, not yeah, even what it's really about. Hey, where the flag yeah. love went? Uh, they, yeah. Nobody even care about that they flag don't care right about the, They don't care about the truth. They care about a way of life and maintaining a way of life. Yeah. yeah anything so. that's, like you were saying, Rob, anything, we get 50000 and make 100000 
it doesn't matter. Anything that's perceived as a victory for black people is going to be a backlash. Yeah. Think about it. All of this is happening because Barack Obama was president. Hmm. Then you get birtherism. Then you get the rise of Trump. Then you get Trump running as a joke. Then you get Trump winning. And everything he does is backlash from Obama roasting him, from Obama's presidency. It's all backlash. So anything we get, no matter how much they have, any type of scintilla of a victory that we get is perceived as a... As a as hey, a if we had a time machine, if we could just go back to that, uh, you know, uh, president's dinner, and somebody could just whisper it in Barack Obama's ear, man. <laughs> hey, yo, hey, yo, B.O., man. <laughs> Take it easy on Don, man. Yeah. Like, just, just chill out, bro. You yeah. don't got to go... Because, man, like... Yeah, this is backlash. This is this backlash. Back, like, you know, a lot of people say that Donald Trump decided to run for president that night. And I believe that. And it was like, man, because, like, if, if you haven't or if you just need a refresher, Barack gave Donald one of the all-time class... Like, I don't know, like, if ribbon was really big. Like, I went to school where ribbon was a sport. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At the car high school, we ripped every day. That was mm -hmm. all we did was rank mm -hmm. from, like... That was one of the most classic roast sessions ever. And we had this thing in New Orleans. It was called getting drove. You never want to be getting beat so bad in ribbon that you start showing an emotional response. Then yeah. it's like you drove. Because once you <laughs> drove, anything can happen. You, you get drove, you get in a fight, you get it. Yeah. He got so drove, he ran for president. Yeah. Like, it was, a, it, and, and there's a lot of people who say that was the, the actual, like, launch point, man. And, um, the jokes are brilliant, too. Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. hey, it was one of the great. Whoever Obama's writers is, hey, they 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 were on point that night, man. Yeah. But uh, but you know, just even getting back on topic of it, like, I think this this is a time that you know historically, like, we still you know time awaits. But I just hope that my I just hope that the story, the true story, gets told. You know, I, I and I hope the the whoever has the loudest voice. Is the is is somebody whose allegiance is just to the truest of stories? How does history get documented now? Yeah, we document it. I mean, the, yeah. the, the, the good part yeah. about it is we don't have to leave it to some company in Texas to yeah. write the history books this time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. now it's like even with the storming of the Capitol. If you notice when it first came out, we saw certain angles, but people have cameras now, so now you can't hide it. So we get 360 yeah. degree views of it and see how bad it was. And we realized that it was thousands of people. And then we realized how deep it is when these people had hotels. They had, these people of, of means, they drove across state yeah. lines to do this. Yeah, yeah and, this was contrived. contrived. And you know, uh, you know, sometimes we, we look at the, the, what people would call the N word, right? Mm -hmm. We would say, man, niggas, when I saw what was going on, you now breaking you, in somebody's office, you, you taking a picture, movie. you taking a selfie. Those were some niggas. No, those are the, 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 the original <laughs> meaning of like, yeah, okay. cause we, 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 we and sometimes the, the, our classism is black people slip. Scallywags. Yeah. And we're like, oh man, that's some, that's some nigga stuff. Like we yeah. feel embarrassed by, yeah. you know, yeah. sitting there like you walking out with a with a with, with the podium or whatever, and you you standing there and you doing this, you you it's like you posing. In the capital, what they put on that's, us, that's nigga shit. That's nigga shit. Yeah. They were celebrating nigga shit. They were celebrating like they won a football game. Yeah. They were celebrating like UT beat A&M. But that's, like, why, that's why we shouldn't call it a coup, because it wasn't organized. They, it was more like a parade or a wildcat strike. You get what I'm saying? They were just inserting their white supremacy. Yeah, we, we got to be careful in how we associate nigga as if it's mm -hmm. this associated only with blackness. I don't care how you spell exactly. it. Yeah. That exactly. Was some, that was the, the core of some nigga shit. Most of. And yeah. I, I'm speaking of two, like documenting the history, and I just want to get his brother a shout out. He's not fully related to the show, but this guy, uh, he started something called Zach TV, and he, he passed away in Chicago. Mm -hmm. But he was a, a pioneer of vigilante journalism. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And this was the first guy to really with no association, nothing, turned himself into a rogue documenter of what was going on in his city. But I just want to challenge the viewers out there too. We don't have to limit our journalism and what we cover to rap, to who killed who, to who beefing with who, to what set is for this. Like we can be vigilante documentarians of history. We can be vigilante documentarians of 
what's going on in real time like it it's the, it's just as powerful you know yeah you know and uh we don't always got to go for you know uh the the low-hanging fruit you know what i'm saying yeah. and ain't nothing wrong with documenting hip-hop in your city and you know what i'm saying because zach tv i feel like zach tv will be studied in communication schools yeah that, you know but there's uh, a there's there's a lot of history to to, to really unfold man when this story starts getting told because even on the and when you just said shout out it just made me think of the brother from st louis darren seals mm, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that was at the forefront of really analyzing the whole black lives matter movement most definitely. Most definitely. and what was going on and calling out a lot of the contradictions and what he was seeing mm -hmm. and then miraculously you know he with the car yeah. burned up or exactly. something he and, and no yeah. one exactly you know there's there's no i mean just the risk yeah it's a heroic when you duty. say things yeah it's a heroic duty and like hey if you feel a certain way pick your pen up you know if you don't you don't it doesn't have to be a camera it could be you telling the story you writing your emo what you saw like it could be hey if you into the cameras if you have not you know don't try to sit up here and re-rock what we're doing but yeah. do your own spin on you know uh you know telling the historic story like we need people out here telling a story from our point of view you know what i'm saying and, and covering it from our point of view. because we don't need to be we don't have to be uniform to be unified we all got to be doing the same thing most definitely most so touching on what equality was saying about um just kind of wilding out and just filming me being a former behind the camera guy mm -hmm. i know that that is a very very touchy lane to be in mm -hmm. because um it can really get you in hot water real quick like it's a lot of yeah. footage that I still got that I probably have never released because, mm -hmm. you know, it'll make people um, see other people in a certain light. And mm -hmm. that okay. backlash, That's how documentaries right. are and done. That backlash yeah. come to me. Maybe when I get to be seventy or eighty, somebody will get yeah. my old hard drives and go through them and say, "Wow, yeah. well, I'm gonna put this out." Yeah. But they can't do nothing to me at that. Yeah, point. I mean, yeah. some yeah. and and and, and some people tell on themselves, they meaning. Do. Some it. stuff is already documented where people are telling on themselves. Right, mm. right, right, the rappers right. that you love are standing next to the police at a George Floyd rally. Mm. Right, yeah. right. It's being documented. <laughs> Nobody had to come out with a camera. Right. It's, it's already there. You're documenting yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Standing, you know, at it, it's a lot of stuff. It just it, it comes out. Yeah. Like they say, if it don't come out in the wash, it'll come out in the rinse. Yeah, in the I, rinse yeah. I definitely got blackballed a couple times. No, mm -hmm. but yeah. that's but that's but that's part yeah. of it. But oh yeah, you know you have to stand on. If you have something, develop it. If you feel like it's something that that's needed, then it becomes a, a documentary and it's out. I mean, in the words of our of our great ancestor, you know. If you remember me as, as any I'm paraphrasing it but if you remember me as anything remember me as sincere even when I was wrong I was sincerely wrong mm. and I, I I ain't got nothing else to say and that's my paraphrase of the great El Malik you know that's the great Malcolm X you know that's all I got to say man. yeah you know, I'll just say hey man history is being made now follow the money follow the money see where it leads right. <laughs> the truth is always somewhere <laughs> trailing exactly. you know right. yeah, sometimes exactly. you got to be prepared to pay the ultimate sacrifice when you uh yep. when you're in this fight i mean you can't be afraid to uh pay the ultimate sacrifice and i think a lot of those people that made that trick to that capital they were yeah they ready were prepared. to they were pay prepared. that ultimate sacrifice exactly. we got to be like that too so yep. don't think uh -huh. that we aren't like that yeah yeah. yeah, we talk about that all the time. Yeah, yeah. But hey, that's right another here. episode of that GHH man. So hey, and the history of now, man. You know, I didn't realize. You know, we started talking about history. We was gonna get so much real time content. Yeah, history is being made right now in 2021. Mm -hmm. So salute to everyone that's been following us. Um, I want to give a shout out to everyone that that that's been engaging with us on the comments. Continue to uh, engage with us on the comments. Like share subscribe spread the word this is gentlemen's history hour every thursday we drop the full episode i just want to say salute and peace, peace. if you're watching this on youtube man hey y'all hit the subscribe button hit the like button this is gentlemen's history hour